Hello everybody, welcome back to 7 Days to Die, and yes, we have officially started Liz Labs. Times have changed. The zombie apocalypse is here. Do we run? Do we hide? Or do we adapt? And build? Do we survive? The new experimental Alpha 20 has just dropped yesterday, so everybody has a chance to get in and play around with all of these new blocks, we have like 1,300 new blocks. We've got so many, I think it's 155 at last count. New POIs to explore. And uh, yeah, the wasteland, the apocalypse, is such an unknown place to a lot of people right now. Well, what we're going to do here in Liz Labs is to do a few experiments to help you figure out a couple of things about the game. Uh, namely, to start with, because we have 1,300 blocks and one of the biggest, I don't know, debates, I guess you could say, for the whole game are people who are extremely for having cheese bases and those who are extremely not <laughs> okay with having a cheese base. So either way, uh, whenever the Horde Knight hits, you have to debate with yourself on what kind of base you're going to craft. But... You might be asking yourself, which blocks of these 5,000 blocks that we now can use, not literally 5,000, there's only like 1,300 blocks that we can use in here, which of these blocks are okay to use for a horde base? Because yes, they look cool, they're decorative, they're nice, but can a zombie path on it? Will a zombie even see it as a block? How are the zombies going to interact with all of these new blocks that we have access to? Whether you are for using a cheese base or against using a cheese base, either which way you fall on, you need to know which one has pathing and which one doesn't. Also, this could also kind of do a, I don't know, a check for the fun pips on in-game, uh, just like an extra person to run through all of the blocks and say, hey, we kind of don't have nav meshing on this particular block for some reason. I don't understand. It seems like a block that should have it. And the fun pimps could be like, uh, well, that one was supposed to have it. What happened? And then they have a chance to go back and look at it. Um, also, uh, this is going to be the one where we go through, this is going to be the series, rather, that we go through, say, the patch notes whenever they come out and try and take a peek at all the mechanics that are new within this new alpha. Uh, to start with, I'm not sure exactly where all we're going to start. There's like 5,000 things to start with. I was actually just sitting here after building this because fun. And uh, I've, I've been trying to sit here and figure out these cellar door things. Now, I've actually turned it on its side because... Um, it's weird, but there are certain sides that don't have vertical support that you think should have vertical support. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, you can't set a block on top of it. Uh, there are certain sides to these uh, things that don't have any kind of support, which means... I don't know, like you couldn't do that. I'm not sure if that's useful or not. Uh, it is just the first thing that I saw that looked unfamiliar. And I turned it to the side just to see whether or not I could get that whole look like I was doing in one of my previous builds. Um, okay, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Uh, Liz Labs is going to be doing a whole lot of random stuff. First things first, we need to, I don't know, take 10 blocks and try them out. We're going to try this a little bit at a time and see how it works. Obviously, we're going to find some cheese. Obviously. So, for those of you who don't like cheese bases, I recommend not using them. Uh, for those of you who like cheese bases, I recommend using them. I, I don't know how else to say that because I, it's such a heated debate in the community about whether or not people should be building cheese bases or not. I don't even, I don't even know what to say. To each his own, and however you feel like playing your particular game, it really does not matter as long as you are enjoying yourself. It, it, that's, that's just the way it is. So, first things first, regardless to which way you fall, you kind of need to have some basic blocks to start with, right? Let me clear out just a little bit of area. Uh, we're just going to start here. I put it on the coast and we're going to work our way inland. We've actually got a lot of space to work with. So, 
Uh, well, I guess I should actually back up just a teensiest bit. What happens if we have brand new players, people who have never ever tried the game, may not actually know how zombie pathing works? Um, so let's start with that, shall we? Uh, right here, we're just going to demonstrate zombie pathing. Okay. Now, this is what people would call a typical corridor starter. You have a an elevated platform that your character is standing on. Say, I'm putting me right here. Okay, well, let me just pop out of here. Say you are up inside a building or any number of other things that could elevate you off the ground. And say you have a... I don't know. Uh, where is bow? Not feral. Let's just keep regular bow. All right. Now you would wonder, from this part, part where the zombie is, right this second, how is it going to figure out where I am? How does this work? How does zombie know? How does zombie brain calculate where the player is? Well, if you look into the files, there's a couple of different senses. The zombies can hear, the zombies can see. So if they can see you and hear you, obviously they're going to find you. But there's this tricky third little uh, tidbit, which is a random number generated by the computer determining whether or not the zombie smells you is how it's kind of described uh so in this case i'm pretty sure he's seeing me i'm not exactly hiding all right zombie brain says i will get up on the same level as player and go after them now what the zombie did was look for a place where it could get up on the same level as me um, in previous versions, the zombies would simply go to the location where the player was at and beat their way to them. In this one, the zombie actually calculates pathing, I guess you could say. It's actually probably the way it's described in the game files as being it calculates. It can actually detect doors. It can detect the health of blocks. This makes zombies very, very smart, right? Yes. Um, now, what happens if the zombie doesn't have a path to you? Say if we take those things out and we bring Bo back out, how does he react to this new scenario? Let's get his attention with sound. Zombie Brain says, let me try to figure out a way to get up to character. But he's extremely confused. He's like, I don't know how to do this. I will beat on this thing, and then I will go over here and beat on this thing. Zombie is very, very frustrated. Um, and what happens should we change this? What happens if we give the zombie its path back? There you go. So the way to get a zombie to come to you in a predictable manner, you give it a clear path to get to you. What happens if the zombie's path is semi-blocked? Say there's just like a random block there. Does this affect the zombie's path? Well, let's find out. Now this is just one block. Now as you can see very clearly, zombies have the ability to jump. Should they find their pathing blocked, they will jump it. Probably just shot some block way off over there in the distance. Okay, now we have that there. What happens if zombie's path is blocked even more? Now zombies can't jump too high. So let's see how he reacts to this information now. Now, even though the zombie's path is blocked, and it knows the path is blocked because it's sitting here beating on the stuff, you know, and it actually took him a little while to come up here to me. He still came up to my level and then is trying to come to me horizontally. 
All right, now that we have established that, zombies will try to get up on your level, regardless to whether your, your level is easy to access or not, they try to get to your level and then come over to you. So the best way to funnel a zombie into where you want it, say where you're standing, obviously, where your traps are, where the entrances of buildings are, or any number of reasons why during a fight you would want to control where a zombie is going, the best way to do it is to elevate or lower yourself to where a zombie has to find you in a particular path. Now, this is very effective in a lot of different ways. As in, this pathing right here, this corridor path, is usually the setup to a lot of people's bases whenever they're starting out. Regardless to whether or not you make this... Uh, four different arms, like you go off in either direction with a set of stairs on each side in your path. Your bunker is in the center of all of it. The zombies will still take the outside paths into where you are at. Say we did this. All right, that's a lot of different paths. Say right back here is like a building that I've made for myself, and this is where I'm going to hold up from the roaming zombies. So how do zombies react to said pathing? Well, first off, zombies calculate the distance to get to you. There's always the random dumb zombie, obviously, but they always calculate the path. Typically, a zombie will calculate approximately 15 blocks to get to you. Whenever it's over 15 blocks, the zombies confused mean like more than usually confused and will probably beat on things rather than being able to figure out the path to you. So as long as you make your they can get to my level path within 15 blocks, the zombies will find you. So instead of maybe doing like this, you want one way they can get to you, but you want it to take a long time for them to get to you. What if we took our path? All right, we've got two ways that they can get on here. Let's take out that path. Now, from where I'm standing to the way that they can get up to me is not very far, but in order for them to get to me, they're going to have to go all the way around. Let's just see how a zombie reacts to this kind of information, this kind of input. I do apologize if this is kind of not new information for some people, but some people have never played this game, and it's a good idea to allow them a chance to see for themselves how zombie pathing works. And also, it's a good demonstration that the zombie pathing from the last alpha to this alpha, alpha has not changed. Uh, there's just like one minor change that I have seen. And we're fixing to test that one too. And there you go. It is still pathing to me because the way up to my level is within 15 feet. If it was not within that 15 feet, it would treat it like it couldn't actually see the path up to me and come beat on the bottom level. So, uh, let us do, let's see, where do we want to build that one at? Hang on. Uh, let's take out this path board. Say we are trying really, really hard to make them walk as long as we possibly can. There we go. Say we wanted to do it like this for reasons. Okay, uh, now this is also going to depend on where said zombie is. Let's put a zombie here. Uh, bow, right there. Put bow here and put him here. All 
right. This bow is so far away he can't even hear me. Not sure if that's 15 blacks or not. But he still passed to me. And heck, he started way over here and he still calculated way out there his path to me. Uh, you are not even getting involved, so that's fine. Uh, how far away is this? Two, three, 16. So that's definitely above the 15 it used to be. Hmm. So maybe they increased the awareness of the horizontal level. That's a good possibility. Now, the shortest distance theory. Would one... Right about here. Went for this side, over that side. Okay. So I think that's enough experimenting with the basic philosophy of how the zombies work. Now, let's take it up a notch and try this. If one block is down on both sides, it used to be that the zombies would still calculate a path because they could jump. Uh, during this recent uh, thing, we found out the zombies don't prefer the jump anymore, so... They may not calculate in the fact that they can jump. I haven't actually seen them do it. Now, a feral can run across, but I haven't seen them jump a gap in this alpha. So maybe they can't in this one, at least not as of yet. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is basically passing. It is going to try and calculate where you are above it, and it's going to try and get up to that level. And then it's going to calculate its path to you through whatever. Um, the higher level the block the more likely it is to choose like a smaller level block to go through uh best way to describe this would to be let's do something like so that would tell us whether or not the zombie is going to calculate what it is made out of let's do this so we can't say it was zombie pathing that determined which one bow chooses uh, let's do that. Alright, so he's going to calculate his path up to me. And then he's going to try and calculate the shortest distance to me. The smallest amount of stuff he has to go through to try and get to me. Which is the health of the wood, so he's going to try and go through the wood first. So in that way, you could actually control where the zombies are going to come at you by elevating the health of certain blocks and leaving others not as high to encourage the zombie to come through it. Also, and it comes to the door. Okay, so if we go to, you have 7,000. You have 1,500. Okay. Okay. So this door right here has got a lot more hit points, a lot more than these walls. Just a chance to calculate, a chance to actually check and see what kind of pathing zombies have now. It's like he had to come around and look. What are you going to choose to hit? Still hitting the door. 
So basically what that tells you is, is zombies will go towards a door no matter its health over the blocks around it because the door is considered a path. It doesn't calculate a door the same way. So if you have a door, defend it. Um, or use that specifically as a way of attracting a zombie to a specific spot so that you can maybe direct turrets at it or any number of things. Or if you're using a pathway... And you wish to try and direct zombies around different paths at different times. You can open and close doors. Uh, similar to... <laughs> it's just like, screw this. It's done. Do you not see that as a path now? And he's getting so angry because that door's got so much help. Okay. Now, see, here's the thing I just learned. I don't think the hatches and doors are pathable like they were before. Okay. Well, that is going to have to take a bit of work, but... Okay, sir, you can stop. Uh, that is actually for a different Liz Labs on figuring out what things are pathable and what things are not. So, that particular spot, that actually tells you what zombies consider pathable... Um, as far as how they calculate their pathing, um, they go for the less hit points on a block. They will always path towards the door. They don't see the doors the same way. They don't calculate them the same way as they do the rest of the blocks. So there is that little tidbit. And apparently a bit of experimenting needs to happen with the hatches and stuff because that is a thing that needs to be worked on. Uh, parkour bases usually tend to use those particular blocks to deviate people around things. Now that you guys understand that part, it's easier to actually understand why the other experiments are happening the way that they are. Okie dokie. Now what we need to do... What we need to do... Oh. And actually we probably need to elevate this platform just a bit so let's do there we go all right uh what we're gonna do is we're gonna place blocks into this cookie cutter thing to see whether or not the zombie is still considered a path it is basically what we're gonna do and then we're gonna take these blocks that are considered not pathable and pathable and set them in different locations Okay, we have already found out. This one, completely pathable on all sides. So we already know this. Pathable. Okay, so we know this one right here is pathable. We'll use the woods to make the pathable bits. Uh, it doesn't matter what the material is, unless of course there's some kind of glitch or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter what the material is, it's whether or not the path can be made over the top of it. It's really not going to... Uh, there we go. We have the path. Uh, now let's t check to see if Bo is able to walk over it, first of all. Or see if he falls through it. Who knows? He may not be able to navigate it properly. Alright, it's pathable because he is coming up here. If he can't traverse it, whether or not he can traverse it is one thing. If they don't see it as a path at all, he would not be walking up here. Completely pathable, they can walk across it. No problemo. Definitely. Got it. Alright, let's try this one. Now, this one's got a couple of different sides. Which one should we try first? Yeah. Definitely. Works. He passed it. The whole nine yards. No issues. Absolutely no issues. Now, what happens if we take these... Yep. No issues. No issues. No stumbles. No nothing. All right. All right, now this particular section over here is going to be for blocks that are not just pathable, but ones that don't cause the zombies to stumble. Now, some of these you might be able to take and add other blocks to them, like uh, 
made uh, Jwoodle's last year's cheese base that he made. It was a combination of two different blocks. For some reason, the zombies saw that as full blocks. Right now, we're just testing pathing and whether or not it causes the zombies to stumble. Take it real slow. Check all of the, all of the blocks. Okay. Now, we are on to this one, which is a three-fourths block. There we go. Yep, no problems. Considers it a path, otherwise it wouldn't even try to get up here. Alright, and no issues traversing it. No stumbles, no nothing. Now, th that is a full path because there are full blocks there. Fully supported, the whole nine yards. Let's ensure that if you did it like this. And no problem. Okay. Will you attempt to go through that? Okay. Obviously, not trying to get there. All right, now we have yet another question. Let's do that. And do that. And let me put... Um, you stay right there for just a second. Now, can I shoot through this gap and kill him? Yes, I can. There you go. So we can actually use that one for something different. All right. So that is what we're going to experiment with. That is what we've got so far. I'm going to spend a little bit of time between this episode and next episode cleaning this area up a little bit and getting it situated. I actually spent about an hour working on my awesome entranceway into the lab. Uh, we're going to get to a whole lot more stuff. Today was kind of the intro, so I do apologize for novice, for uh, uh, pro players or whatever have been at, at this for quite some time. Uh, some of these things may not occur to people who just started playing this game. I can tell you whenever I first started playing this game about two years ago now, I would never have guessed how zombie pathing worked unless somebody had actually demonstrated what it meant. So this is necessary for any new players to figure out, you know, uh, how do you even start building a horde base? Uh, you'd have to know the pathing, how zombies think in this game. Every zombie game does it differently. And this zombie game actually gives the zombies a ton of intelligence. I mean, like, a ton of intelligence to know how to get to you, how to pass to you, how to dig down to you, that kind of thing, which we are going to get to as well inside this Liz Labs. Um, that is it for the day, guys. If you have any questions, I am going to go ahead and start a list of questions. And each and every time we do this, we are going to explore new and more things, not just the blocks. Uh, we're going to get into, like, say, the drones. We're going to get into the turrets. We're going to get into fall damage. We're going to go through a lot of the stuff that was inside the patch notes and take a peek at them uh, to see how they affect your game on a regular basis. So, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. You have a wonderful day, wonderful night, and you stay shiny. Bye.